So uh, thanks for organizing this conference and for inviting me. So yeah, good morning, everyone. It's eight here, so my uh, brain is not working quite well yet. I'm sorry. So uh, yeah, I, I wrote the title Subgroups of Right Angle Arting Groups, but I want to point out that I will focus on a finally generated normal subgroups of right angle arting groups so that, uh, yeah, I mean, it's the, like the last thing that I have done. And I also want to say that uh, this is joint work with, with Monse, that was one of my supervisors of the PhD. So like in order to ensure that uh, we are all in the same page and we have the same notation, I briefly want to introduce right angle arting groups. So for that, uh, we start with a finite simplicial graph. So I have a finite graph that doesn't have loops and doesn't have multiple H's. And I associate a group, which is the associated right angle arting group. I denote it by GX and it's given by a, by a presentation. So the generators of the group are the vertices of my graph and the relations tell me that two generators commute if and only if they are joined by an edge in, in my graph. So for example, if, if I have this graph, I will have that in the corresponding right angle arting group, I have uh, three vertices, but I don't have edges, so I don't have relations. So this will be the free group of rank three. And more generally, if I have a totally disconnected graph, so I don't have edges, I will have within vertices, I will have that the corresponding right angle arting group is a free group. So the class of racks extends the, the class of, of free groups. On the contrary, if I have a complete graph, for example, as this one, I will again have that I have three generators in the associated right angle arting group, but the relations tell me that all the generators uh, pairwise commute. So in this case, I will have a free abelian group of rank three. And again, as you can imagine, if I start with a complete graph with n vertices, I will get uh, the free abelian group of, of rank n. So racks are also like a generalization of free abelian group. We can say that like they interpolate between free groups and free abelian groups. And as another example, uh, if I have this graph, here you can see that I have an, an F2, the free group of rank two, and I have another F2 here. And since I'm taking the join of the, of the graphs, I have the direct product. So also like if I have finally many right angle arting groups, the, the direct product is again a, a right angle arting group by taking the, the join of the, of the graphs. And also the, the free product of finally many racks is a rack by taking the, the decision union of the graphs. Okay. So uh, now that I have like introduced uh, right angle arting groups, I want to give like a little bit of motivation of why we care about these finally generated normal subgroups. So I want to give like uh, two, two motivations and you can pick the, the one that you like the most. So the first one is uh, like the knowledge that we have about finally generated normal subgroups of free groups. So we have this very nice historical result in geometric group theory that says that uh, free groups don't have many finally generated normal subgroups. Meaning that, uh, that if I have a free group and I have a non-trivial finally generated normal subgroup, then N needs to be of finite index in, in F. So more or less here, we are saying that the only way of having finally generated normal subgroups is having finite quotients. But uh, this, this result has been, has been generalized a lot to, to other classes of, of groups. So after uh, this result of Schrader, um, we like Bamsdag showed that it also holds if I'm assuming that F is a free product, not just a free group. Then when Beery, Neumann and Schrebel uh, introduced uh, sigma invariance, they, they used the sigma invariance to show that it's also true if I have that F is a finally presented group with deficiency greater than one. So just a small recap of what the deficiency is. If, if I have a, a, a finite presentation, so the generators X and the set of generators is finite and the set of the relations is finite, then I define the deficiency of my finite presentation to be the difference between the cardinals. So if I have a finally presented group G, I can take the deficiency of G to be the supremum of all the deficiencies among all the finite presentations that I have for G. So yeah, they show that uh, for, for finally presented group of deficiency greater than one, 
we do have that finally generated normal subgroups are of finite index. And as far as I'm aware, like the, the last generalization is this one, which, uh, which says that uh, like more generally, if I have a finally presented group where the first LGBT number is greater or equal than one, then I also have that normal finally generated normal subgroups are of finite index. So I won't introduce the first L2BT numbers, but uh, if the deficiency is greater than one, it implies that the first L2BT number is greater than or equal than one. So, okay, we, we really understand the uh, finally generated normal subgroups of free groups, and we have said that the class of racks extends the class of, of free groups. So a natural question is, okay, can I say something of this flavor for right angle arcing groups are finally generated normal subgroups also in the class of racks of finite index? So that's one of the motivations. And the second one comes, of course, from the algorithmic problems because subgroups of racks are very interesting from this uh, point of view. So again, let's restrict first of all for uh, to the class of, of free groups because they are like the easiest examples of right angle arcing groups. So if I take finally generated subgroups of free groups, they are again free and they are finally generated. So in particular, all the algorithmic problems will be decidable in this class of finally generated subgroups of free groups. And a natural way of constructing other groups uh, is by taking direct products. So it turns out that if I take the direct product of two free groups, we are already lost. Like we won't have that the algorithmic problems are decidable. So we won't have such a structured theorem for, for subgroups. And also note that the direct product of free groups is, is a still a right angle arcing group. So Mihailova showed a, a long time ago that if I take the direct product of two free groups of rank two, then there is a finally generated subgroup uh, with undecidable membership problem. And Miller used uh, this construction uh, to show that there is a finally generated subgroup with undecidable conjugacy problem. So in the class of free groups, finally generated subgroups are, are very rigid, but when I take direct products, uh, word is wild, like we are a bit lost. But thanks to like they have a specific H1 and H2 have a specific construction, it's like a free corner pullback. So Grunewald was able to show by, by using this construction that H1 and H2 are not finally presented. So here we have a hope because maybe if we are more restrictive with the finiteness conditions, so if we ask H1 and H2 to be finally presented, we can we can have a hope and say that the algorithmic problems in this case uh, will be decidable. And this is indeed the case. So Baumslack and Roseblade um, generalized the result of Grunewald by giving a, a very nice structure theorem for finally presented subgroups. So they show that if I have a finally presented subgroup of the direct product of two free groups, then it's, it's very mild. Either it is free or it is virtually the direct product of two free groups. So it has a finite index subgroup, which is a direct product of two free groups. So as you can see, a uh, um, straightforward corollary of this theorem is that in, in this case, so in the case of finally presented subgroups of the direct product of two free groups, the algorithmic problems are decidable. So here as a recap, what we have said is that uh, in, in F times F prime, so these are free groups, we have that uh, finally generated subgroups are bad. We have the examples of Mihailova and, and Miller. So here we are sad. But if we work with finally presented subgroup, we have uh, the, the structure theorem of Bounsack and Roseblade. So here we are happy. So, um, and, and again, the direct product of two free groups is a right angle arcing group. So now a natural question is, okay, is finite presentation enough in the class of right angle arcing groups? So uh, is finite presentation. Enough to ensure that subgroups of rack um, have good algorithmic behavior. Uh, 
And the answer is, of course, no, because otherwise life would be like pretty boring. And so the answer is no. And it was answered by, by Brightson. Oh, sorry. Oh. In 2012, I would say. So he showed that there is a right angle arting group A and H a finally presented subgroup of the direct product of A times A. So this is still a rock with undecidable conjugacy and membership problems. So as you can see, even though in the direct product of two free groups, finite presentation was enough, when we work in the whole class of right angle arcing groups, these finite conditions are not enough to ensure a good algorithmic behavior. So now the question is, okay, which property is sufficient or do I need for a subgroup to be good from this point of view? So this is like the, the second motivation that we had. Remember that the first one was that we have a classification or we understand finally the native normal subgroup of free groups. And the second one is uh, trying to solve algorithmic problems in the class of subgroups of, of racks. So after like giving this motivation, uh, I wanna like introduce the, the main result. So I, I wanna make sure that I'm writing everything. Wait a minute, okay. So I, I will write the, the main result here. Okay. So we start, of course, with, with a right angle arting group. And I, I decompose it as a direct product. So. Uh, where where each right angle arting group is directly in the composable. So okay, so this is a bit stupid, but just to make sure that we all understand this. So for example, if I have the P4, which is my favorite right angle arting group then I will have that n equals one, like I cannot decompose it as a, as a direct product. But for example, if I have this graph, no, I don't want this one. And I take the join, I will have that gx is f2 times z times f2. So here n is equal to three, okay. So this was something stupid, but just in case. And we have a non-trivial finally generated normal subgroup of, uh, of my right angle arting group. And I want to understand this n. And I assume that uh, n is full. So being full means that it needs to uh, intersect all the factors. No. So here again, I, I want to make like a note uh, saying that like what I'm asking is stupid, meaning that uh, assume that one of the intersections is trivial. So if, for, for example, the intersection with the first factor is trivial and I take a P to be the, the natural homomorphism where I'm forgetting about the first factor, Then I have that N is isomorphic to its image, which is again, a, a finally generated normal subgroup of another smaller right angle arcing group. 
So what I'm asking is that n should be like optimal or the, the right angular twin group should be optimal where n is normal, let's say. Okay, so I have like these conditions and the, the theorem tells me the following. So the quotient is, uh, is virtually abelian, so it's virtually set to the n for some n. So I can have a zero, of course, I can, I can have a finite quotient, for example, taking the rack to be a free group, but I can also have other uh, free abelian quotients. So uh, this is the same as saying that uh, it's um, abelian by, by finite. But even more like after showing that uh, the quotient uh, needs to be uh, virtually abelian, we were able to show that it's not just abelian by finite, but it's also finite but abelian, which is much nicer. So the quotient is finite by, by abelian. So like if you want to be uh, fancy saying uh, this thing, it's the same as saying that there is a character in the first sigma invariant of the rack such that uh, my, my normal subgroup M has finite index in the kernel. So it's what we are saying is that the only way uh, of having finally generated normal subgroups in racks is more or less taking kernels of, of characters or homomorphisms to, to R or to free abelian groups. And another fancy way of saying it is that N will be of a Stalin's theory type. So all the ways of having finally generated normal subgroups are being of a Stalin's theory type. So now that I have like introduced the, the, the main theorem, uh, I want to point out that it holds for a more general setting. So I, I have been talking about right angular arching groups all the time because they are like my favorite class and I just work with them, but uh, the theorem holds for a more general setting. So it also holds for right angle coxeter groups, not just for racks. And more generally it holds for graph products. So it holds for graph products and the graph product case implies the right angle coxeter group case and also the rack case. And but here, like to be uh, nicer, uh, I, I have written that it holds for graph products where my graph X doesn't have universal vertices. So I don't want a vertex in my graph that is joined to to all the other uh, vertices. So for example, if if I have this graph product, hmm, yeah, I don't care. Oh. Before let's say, then I will have that this is f two times, this. and I don't want this. I don't want an f two here. So if I have a, if I have a direct product, I want this thing to be abelian more or less. But well, whatever. So it also holds for graph products. And uh, if you are interested in uh, limit groups over racks or uh, finally presented residually racks or whatever. It also holds for graph towers over racks, but it doesn't hold for limit groups um, over over right angular arching groups. So now that I, but just remember the right angular arching group case, which is the, the nicest one for me. So now that I, I have said like the theorem, I want to give some consequences, of course. So um, like I will talk about a residual, fine, a residual properties, sorry, and algorithmic problems, of course. So. Uh, everyone more or less knows what a being residually finite means, but we have like a more general definition, which is being conjugacy separable. So we say that a group is conjugacy separable if uh, I take two elements that are non-conjugate in my group, there is a finite group and a homomorphism such that the images are not conjugate in, in my finite group Q. So as you can see, conjugacy separability implies, implies residual finiteness, but not uh, the opposite. So some examples of conjugacy separable groups are a virtually free groups, finally presented residually free groups, virtually surface groups, and so on. So 
residual fineness passes to, to, to subgroups, but conjugacy separability doesn't. So it doesn't even pass to, to finite in the subgroups. So that's what we need, like another notion. So as I have said, residual fineness passes to subgroups, but not conjugacy separability. So that's why we define a group to be hereditarily conjugacy separable if it has a property that uh, conjugacy separability passes to finite in the subgroups. So as you can see in, in these examples in, in here, all these classes are close undertaking finite in the subgroups. So that's why we'll have the same examples here. So um, you may wonder, okay, are there like subgroups that are conjugacy separable but not hereditarily conjugacy separable? And well, we indeed have like uh, Armando Martino and Ashot Minashian show that uh, in the class of finally presented subgroups of racks, like it seems that the class of finally presented subgroups of racks is the appropriate place to, to find all the counterexamples. So there is a there is a subgroup which is conjugacy separable, but not hereditarily conjugacy separable. But Ashot show that racks are hereditarily conjugacy separable. So again, from this fact, you can see that a finite, finiteness condition, so finite presentability, is not enough en uh, to ensure um, like a, a, the hereditarily conjugacy separability. So again, here we have the same question. Okay, which property do I need for the subgroup of the rack to be hereditarily conjugacy separable? And well, uh, I should study it in, in a very nice paper, uh, like a lot of uh, normal subgroups of racks and a lot of conditions to, to have this, uh, this property. And he showed that if I have a finally generated normal subgroup of a rack such that the quotient is virtually polycyclic, then the subgroup is hereditarily conjugacy separable and it has decidable conjugacy problem. So if, if you remember uh, in, in the theorem, in the main theorem, we have proof, where it is, okay. We have proof that it's not just virtually polycyclic, but all the questions will be always virtually abelian. So thanks to this uh, this theorem, and thanks to the result of, uh, of Aminasian, we will have that uh, finally generated normal subgroups of racks. Since this condition is always satisfied, all the finally generated normal subgroups of racks will be hereditarily conjugacy separable and will have this side of all conjugacy problem. So finally generated normal subgroups of rocks are hereditarily conjugacy separable and have decidable conjugacy problem. And another very easy corollary is that since we're saying that quotients are virtually uh, abelian and there the word problem is decidable, we will also have that the membership problem is decidable. So, okay, I'm a bit lazy. I don't want to write this again. Have decidable membership problem. So the conclusion is that even though finite finiteness condition as finite presentability is not enough in the class of racks, uh, normality is, is enough at least. So after like these corollaries, I wanna give like a very brief observation, which is that this is a very particular property of right angular arting groups. So as soon as we pass to finally present the subgroups, we will of course be lost. And a very easy way of looking like of seeing this I good morning. Of seeing this is that uh, we have the risk reconstruction and later on the, the work of Haglan and Weiss. So uh, in this construction, we can take Q to be any finally presented group. Then we can always find a short exact sequence of this type. And we can even more like ensure that this gamma will be uh, virtually a finally presented subgroup of a rack. And K is finally generated. So we'll have that K is finally generated and normal in gamma. And the question can be anything because here I can take you to be any finally presented subgroup. So that's like the, the main observation that I want to give. And just like to finish with the talk, like I would 
like to give like a little bit of uh, advertisement of what I would like to do in the future. So like uh, now there is a lot of work of like very good mathematicians trying to work in which uh, groups uh, fiber, meaning like which groups admit uh, homomorphisms to, to R with finally generated kernel. And a very nice result of David Kilak is uh, that he showed that if we are working with a residually finite rationally solvable group, then this group virtually fibers if and only if the first l 2 bt number is zero. So I would like to go in the opposite dire direction and try to understand which classes of groups uh, have the property that the only way of having finally generated normal subgroups is fibering. So we have seen that in the class of right angle arcing groups, this holds, the only way of having finally generated normal subgroups is having a virtually abelian quotient. So the question is, okay, do I have like a larger group of uh, larger class of groups where this holds so yeah that's that's what i wanted to say so thanks for your attention thank you very much uh, for your talk does anyone have any any questions yeah i you might have mentioned that, but after your main theorem, you said that um, you can you could actually extend this result to various other classes of groups like right angle Coxeter groups, but you also said to certain graph products um, that do not have a universal vertex. Um, basically, what is the reason why the graph shouldn't have a universal vertex? Okay, it's it, it's not that okay. This was like a very sloppy or uh, the easy way of saying it. But what uh, what I want is like if I have a universal vertex, I want to have that the quotient. So I want to have that the quotient will be like a virtually abelian by a normal subgroup. So if I do have a universal vertex, so for example, in right angle arcing groups, I can have universal vertices, but in right angle arcing groups, seen as graph products, the vertices are set. They are abelian, so I'm, I have that all the quotients will be abelian. And in the case of right angle corsetter groups, the vertices are set mod two, so the, the quotients are also abelian. So that's what I'm requiring uh, to the universal vertex. Oh, okay. But this was like an easy way of saying it instead of saying, okay, we have this restriction in the universal vertices. Okay. Okay, thanks. Are there any other questions? Well, I was wondering if, so your result about the conjugacy inherited subgroups yeah. have decidable conjugacy problem. Was this all subgroups or? It's just for uh, normal subgroups. This one, the corollary. Yeah. No, it's just for, so yeah, it's just like a consequence of the theorem of Ashot Minashiant, and he he worked with uh, finally generated normal subgroups. So he uh, he had like this restriction that the question needs to be virtually polycyclic, and so we said like, oh, okay, but we have proved that it's virtually abelian, so this theorem always holds for normal subgroups. Sure. Um. So then, do you know if it is like? Are there examples of non-normal subgroups which have undecidable conjugacy problem? Yeah, so for example, uh, like you have this example of, uh, of, wait a minute, of Brighton that I have written, but like it's a non constructive word. It is. Okay, here when Brighton gave this example of a right angle arcing group and a finally presented subgroup with undecidable conjugacy. Oh, okay. It's but it's not a um a constructed example. It's using mapping class groups and then saying that the mapping class group embeds in a right angle arcing group. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay. Does anyone else have any final questions? Okay. Well, we should thank uh, Tony again. Thank you.